In today's video, I'll be showing you how I made this metal detector. Let's take a closer look. The entire metal detector I constructed out of PVC pipe. This is half inch pipe. That's the sensing coil at the end. I'll give you close up images of that in a second. That's watertight. The entire thing is wrapped in PVC tape and a plastic spool sealed with white E6000 sealant. And there's heat shrink tubing on the restraint coming out of the coil right there that you see. So water cannot enter that. I'll also show you how the coil cover was made as well. Now the end is not glued onto the pipe, so in the future I have the ability to swap out search coils. The entire circuit fits inside this small Radio Shack project box. Right over here is the power switch. I positioned it so my hand is in the holder. It's easy to push on and push off. Right next to it is the power indicator LED. On top of the box is a small speaker that I pulled out of an old cell phone. That's an 8 ohm speaker. Wire coming out of here to the search coil. Now later on what I'm going to do, because I have two search coils for this, is I'm going to install more than likely a type B female USB connector here and I'm going to put the male end on each one of the search coils. By doing that, I'll have the ability to easily change out the search coils. I could swap from different sizes. Over here is an eighth inch stereo jack that goes to the headset right here. As soon as this is plugged in, it automatically disconnects the speaker. Once this connector has been unplugged, it automatically switches back to the speaker. Right here on the side, you're looking at the sensitivity adjustment. This is the 1K potentiometer. Ideally, you want to use a 10 turn for an easier adjustment. As you can see, everything was bent to shape. I have a video showing how to do this. It's very easy. You can check out the link right here. The part that goes in my forearm was very easy to make as well. This is a 3 inch PVC pipe. Cut it a little more than in half. I heated this section here spread it apart to make it wider to fit my forearm just right. The holes are drilled, countersunk to go straight through the pipe, tightened with a wing nut. And over here I have a two inch pipe cut to about an inch wide and that's to keep the metal detector stable once you sit it on the ground. As you can see when my hand goes in, it's very comfortable right now and I can just reach like that and push to turn it on, turn it off use my left hand to adjust the sensitivity. Now for the highest sensitivity with this unit you want to be able to adjust this to the point where you hear a little bit of a motor boating sound that would be the most sensitive setting. It doesn't make a difference if there is that little background motorboat sound it'll actually be easier to detect objects that are deeper. What I'm going to do now is open this compartment up show you what it looks like and I'm also going to show you the circuit board that I made. And if you're interested in making your own circuit board, I have a video for that as well. You can click on the link that you see right here in this box. And another window will open up in your browser. You can push pause on your video player and continue watching this one. When you're done, you can go back to that video. All right, I'm going to show you how I set up my coil cover. Now, what I needed to do to keep these clips from popping off like that was just make a slit in the side of the coil cover so when the clip is lifted up like this, it rotates into the slot and it keeps the clip from popping off of the plastic like it would if it was over here. See, it pops right off. So I wanted to go like that, and now I could lift up. I have all three of those like that. This slides right over my coil, 
and it's easy to remove and very easy to clean. Now the forearm support right here, all of these corners are nice and rounded and filed so there's nothing sharp. I was going to take a computer mouse pad, cut it to the shape of the inside and glue it in using contact cement. But after using it a few times, I realized I really do not need anything in here because it's that comfortable. If I wanted, I could have very easily made this an adjustable shaft by cutting it in the center, flaring out about 8 inches of this pipe, as shown in my other video, and then I could have put different settings using a nylon bolt to adjust the length. But this is only for me, so I'm going to leave it one straight length like you see here. This is the schematic. I posted the link to the schematic at TalkingElectronics.com in the video about section or the video description area of this video. You have two coils. You have a transmit coil, which is right here with the 70 turns, and you have a receiving coil, which is over here coming off the base of the two transistors to the emitter, which is 50 turns. The frequency is set by the capacitor, which is in parallel with the transmit winding. Now I set mine to around 13 kilohertz. When I probe the collector using my digital meter on the frequency setting, I get around 12.85 kilohertz right here. Now you can adjust the frequency that you like. I have had very good results up to as high as 50 kilohertz. I'm going to post a link in the video description area for an online resonant frequency calculator. You can input your capacitor value, and you could also input the inductance value of your winding. If you don't know the value of the inductance winding, I'm also going to include in the video description area an inductor coil calculator as well. You can input all your information. If the coil's 4 inches, you can input 4 inches. You put the size of the wire. It could be 0.25 millimeter. It could be 0.35 millimeter. You also enter the desired inductance value and then it will calculate how many turns are required of the size wire on the form that you have chosen. Once that coil is wound, then you're going to know what the capacitor value should be for the desired frequency. You'll use the online calculator. The power comes in on the right side of the circuit. It uses a 9 volt battery. You have your on off switch, simple power indicator LED. I prefer to use the colored epoxy rather than the water clear. They show up much better under low current. And you're going to want to use a 2K. Let me change this right here to conserve battery power. Put a 2K resistor here. And after that is a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And then the positive rail then ties into an 18 ohm resistor through an 8 ohm speaker. Now I have a lot of 8 ohm speakers laying around from Salvage Electronics, but what I chose to use for this project was a very small 8 ohm speaker out of an old cell phone. That's probably the best thing for you to use for this project. This transistor right here is a BC338. I chose to use a 2N4401. It can handle some current. That's a 1K resistor. You have another 1K and you have a 10K here. This circuit that you see here draws around 25 to 28 milliamps. And if you notice that your circuit is drawing a lot more, it's because the audio portion, which is right here of the circuit, is consuming a lot of current. Now what I did is where this 10K is, I reduced this value right here. I lowered that down to around a 2.7K. And by doing so, I still had excellent audio out of the speaker and I also had very good audio out of my headphones. I'm going to show you in a minute how you can also add headphones to the circuit. Once I did that, my current was around 65 or 70 milliamps. It dropped all the way down to 25 or 26 so I can get a lot more runtime out of the circuit. The capacitor value, I played around with these values here. This actually changes the tone by adjusting this one and that one. The rest of these components you see here in the audio portion of the circuit from right in front of this pen all the way to here, they all can stay as is. That's a 240K, 
10K BC557. In my case, I use a 2N4403. I use for the BC547s, I use the KSP2222A for all three of these. You could use a 2N3904. There's a lot of different general purpose NPNs that you can use for these transistors. You can also get by using a 2N4401 like I used here. This whole part of the circuit runs directly off the battery voltage. This portion of the circuit here, which you need to be very stable for your transmit and receiving coils, is regulated. So you have a Zener regulator circuit, you have a 330 ohm resistor. Over here you have a 6.2 volt Zener. You could use a 5.6 if you want. I chose to use a 6.2. That keeps a nice regulated voltage on this rail and it also helps to add stability to this whole portion of the circuit. Once the first transistor is oscillating, the transmit winding is inducing currents into the receiving winding. When everything is in balance, you're not going to hear any audio coming out of your speaker or your headphones. Once a metallic object is brought near the sensing coil, what happens, that metallic object robs the current away from the receiving winding. Eddy currents are induced into that metallic object, thereby reducing what would have been captured by this winding. And when that happens, this base receives less voltage, and what happens, the voltage at the collector begins to increase. When the voltage begins to increase at the collector, that's when you start to hear the motor boating sound coming out of your speaker, and that would indicate a detection of a metal object. Both of the transistors here are tied together. They get their base current through the receive winding, which ties into the emitter, and then you have a signal diode, a 1N4148, could be a 914, and from here you have a 1K8, 1800 ohms, feeding into that regulated top rail. So you have 6.2 volts here feeding through, but what happens once that 6.2 makes it to here, most of that is going to be drained through this diode, leaving behind around 0 0.6, 0 0.65 volts. Once this receiving winding receives current from the pulses from the transmit winding, what happens, the base voltage here will climb a little bit. As it climbs, the current is allowed to flow through. When it flows through, the voltage here drops, and then that turns off the audio, which means no detection. If there's a detection, what will happen, the voltage here will begin to drop, slightly turning off this transistor, causing the voltage at this point to rise. So it's very simple the way this operates. The sensitivity is adjusted right here with a 1K potentiometer. Ideally, for your sensitivity adjustment for this potentiometer, you should go with a 10 turn. It allows for a more precise adjustment of the sensitivity for the circuit. Now what I added from the base of these two transistors to the negative rail is a 470K ohm resistor. And what that does, it adds a little more stability to the sensitivity setting on your potentiometer. Ideally, the circuit should be adjusted that when you hear a motor boating sound coming from the speakers, that is actually the highest sensitivity setting. Now, I noticed that once you set the potentiometer to that most sensitive setting where it motor boats, that it may try and drift. And the drifting is caused due to temperature. You have temperature causing a, an effect on the diode as well as these transistors. So if you were to breathe on this circuit really hot, you would see that it would cause a audio output change. It is fairly stable, especially once it's installed in a project box. But I did notice that adding a 470K ohm resistor between the negative rail and the bases of the two transistors, it helps to control that drift. It makes it a lot less you hold the sensitivity setting a lot better. So I would definitely add between a 470K and a 680K between the two bases and the negative rail. And that is it. That is the extent of this circuit. It's extremely simple. The values are not super critical on your transmit winding and your receive winding. I'm going to show you another coil that I made, which is a little larger, 
and I'll give you some measurements so if you would like to duplicate that. For the small coil that I made that was only 3 inches in diameter, I used approximately 26 gauge wire and I used 140 turns for the transmit winding and I used 100 turns for the receive. Once you have the circuit together, if you turn it on and it's not detecting and you can't get the sensitivity to adjust properly, take one of the windings and reverse the leads and that should resolve the issue. This is the other coil that I made, which later on I'm going to put a flat top on it and put the same fitting so I could slide it on and off my pole on my metal detector. I'm going to have another wire with a four pin connector so I can interchange the two coils if I want it. This one measures four and three quarters across by seven eighths of an inch wide. You can see how I wound it. Hopefully it's not blurry. Right there. The wider band is the transmit, which I wound 47 turns of the 26 gauge wire. As you can see, everything is wound nice and neat and tight. The second layer, which is on top right here, that's the receive, and that has 35 turns. We're going to take a look at the inductance on the 35 and the 47. This meter is now on the 2 millihenry setting, so if it says 0 .100, that means 100 micro Henry. So let's take a look. Connect this to the 35 turns, which is the receive. And you're looking at 289 to 290 micro Henry. Let's take a look at the transmit, which is right here. and 457 microhenry. So you know what the values are if you wind on the exact same form. And this coil does perform extremely well. I did test this out before I installed my other one. For smaller objects, the three inch one does a lot better and the three inch coil also does a lot better if you're looking in between trashy areas. If you're looking for larger objects deeper, then this is the way to go. I suggest making both of them. Now I also wanted, in addition to the speaker, to have the ability to plug in a headset. And what I did is very simple. Here you see point A, which is right after the 18 ohms. What you have to do, I'm going to flip this over and show you, is you're going to take an eighth inch stereo jack. This is the diagram for the jack. Once the jack slides in, these two spread apart, disconnecting the speaker, and allowing all the audio to flow into the left and right earphones that you're wearing. Now, you're going to tie the left and right outputs together because you're going to want to hear everything going on in both of your ears. Right here is from point A, which is the 18 ohm resistor, which is right here, point A. That would flow through into the left and to the right. If nothing's plugged in, the audio will flow right around through the arrow and back to the speaker again. When something is plugged in, this spreads apart, disconnecting the speaker, allowing it to flow into your headphones. This is the ground. The ground is going to have a resistor to reduce the audio. If you don't, it's going to blast your ears out. So definitely place a 200 ohm fixed resistor right here before this ties into the NPN collector which is right here. That part over here does not go to ground. That goes to the NPN collector. If you'd like, if you want to be able to adjust the audio level, you could maybe put a 500 ohm pot. I really don't suggest it. You really do not need it. I would just throw in a 200 ohm fixed and call it quits. So that's it. You'll have your stereo jack and you'll have your speaker and it automatically disconnects once the headphones are plugged in. What I'm going to do now is demonstrate how well my metal detector works using various objects. All right, let me turn on the metal detector and adjust the sensitivity. Let's try a quarter. With the headphones on, you can detect changes in the audio. I can hear it there. It's hard for you to hear it.
try a copper penny. Right, right there it's grabbing it. Try a bronze penny. Right there. Try a nickel. Let's turn up the sensitivity. There we go. I could hear it there, but you really can't. Right there. Let's try a pull tab. It's grabbing it right there. Right there. Right around there I can grab it. Pretty far. Try an old pull tab, like this one. If you don't dig pull tabs, you don't dig gold. Old room keys found with my mine lab, buried for years in the ocean. You could hear the sound change right there. Speeding up, speeding up. Chunk of die cast metal. Right, right here. This is the tag that goes on a bird's ankle. An inline skate from a necklace. Let's try a gold hoop earring. Speeding up, slowing down, speeding up. My mind lab doesn't do a good job with this. This is doing okay. Try this little gold bracelet.
Much easier to hear on the headphones. Very speed up. Right there. Right there. Right there. Try a silver ring. Try this tungsten ring. You can hear it right there, but it's hard for you to hear it. Small silver ring. Silver skateboard. Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. There we go. Right there, I can grab it. Right there. Small silver ring again. Let's try a platinum ring, and my Mind Lab Explorer does not do a good job with this. Grabbing it right there. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.